Welcome back, folks. So I know we've already done donuts, but I felt like delving into some maple longs. So once you've mastered these donuts, these are going to be little treats. Well, well, not really little, but big treats of joy that are going to blow your mind. So let's have a little sneak peek of these because I think you guys are going to be longing for this. What little gems those are. And we're gonna be filling them with a maple creme patissier. Now, if you wanna get common about it, custard. In addition, we're gonna be doing two different glazes, a chocolate maple glaze and a regular maple glaze as well. And of course, showing you how to make donuts, which we've shown you before, but we're gonna show you again and how to shape them. So I've done enough yibber yabbing, let's crack on. So we're gonna start with the enriched dough for the donuts and we're gonna need 150 ml of milk, which is 0.6 cups. In addition, we want one tablespoon of sugar in there as well. So we're gonna pop this onto a medium heat for about a minute. We're gonna bring it up to a 35 Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. And if you get this too hot, potentially you could kill the yeast. If it's too cold, then the yeast won't proof. So make sure you get the right temperature. So the milk is at the right temperature and we're gonna need two teaspoons of dry active yeast. So once that's dissolved, set that aside. And also don't forget to take your one egg out of the fridge, which um, I did as per usual. And if that's the case, just run it under warm water just to bring it up to room temperature. And also I forgot the butter as well, because you need to soften this up and you want three and a half tablespoons of butter or 50 grams. So I'm gonna use half a packet basically. But please don't run this under the water. It's not gonna work. You're just gonna have to wait. Next, you're gonna need 225 grams of plain or all-purpose flour, which is one and a half cups, and obviously sieved. So time to get the KitchenAid out, or you can do this by hand. In addition, you want that hook attachment. Then pop the sieved flour straight into the bowl. Without too much going in your mouth. In addition, we want that pinch of salt in there as well. And then put it onto a slow speed. Oh, I actually plugged it in for a change. Then in goes your milky yeasty mix. And then just let that whip brown for about two, three minutes. So once your dough has started to bind together and you've got your egg at the exact temperature, just don't, just don't ask. Gently crack in your egg, minus the shells, obviously. Now it might look like a sloppy mess, but just give it time. It will eventually incorporate after five minutes. And obviously bring up the speed slightly if you need to. So once that egg is finally incorporated, let this beat for on a medium speed for about five, 10 minutes until slightly smooth. So the dough is looking a little bit more smooth, so we're gonna add the 50 grams of butter, little by little. So once that butter is all incorporated and the dough is nice and smooth, grab yourself some excess flour and obviously take this bad boy off. So generously dust the work surface with flour, a little bit on the bowl as well, as this mix will be quite sticky, but you don't need too, too much flour as you don't wanna change the hydration. And then what you wanna do is just very carefully pull up the dough, it will be very sticky and using the flour to try and shape the dough. And after a little bit of work, you should have yourself a nice little dough ready to go. And obviously this dough doesn't look a lot, but if you want to double the mix and you want to make a load of these maple longs, go for it. So just dust a bowl with a little bit of flour and dust it over the top of the dough and then just drop them in, then cling film and then put it somewhere warm until it's doubled in size. So we're finally clean and tidy. Well, maybe not that clean. So once you're finally clean, much better. We're gonna start making that maple creme patissier or custard for the donuts. So we're gonna need 500 ml of milk, which is 2.1 cups. In addition, we want one teaspoon of vanilla. And then you want three tablespoons of good quality maple syrup. And then pop this onto the stove to bring up to a boil, but careful you don't boil it over. In addition, you want, oh, bugger. And without dropping your eggs all over the place, you're gonna need six egg yolks, obviously keep the whites, minus the shells. Then you want 40 grams of caster sugar or fine granulated sugar as well into the eggs. Then we want 25 grams of corn flour or corn starch, which is two and three quarter tablespoons. And then you want 25 grams of plain or all purpose flour, which is about 3.3 tablespoons. And then just give that a nice little cheeky whisk up until it's nice and pasty. 
So once your milk is up to the boil, start slowly pouring some of that liquid in, just a little bit to begin with, incorporating it into the paste, and then add in a little smidge more than the rest of the milk mix. And if you're wondering why little by little prevents the lumps. And then once that's all incorporated, pour that straight back into the pan. And then take the mix over to the stove and put this back onto a medium heat and then just give it a continuous stir. Don't walk away from it, otherwise it will go lumpy. Nice and gently for about five to 10 minutes until it starts to thicken. So once it's thickened up to the right consistency, we're gonna cook this out for a further two, three minutes just to get that eggy taste out of it to make sure the eggs are cooked all the way through. So once that's finally cooked out, have a little taste to make sure there's no eggy taste to it. Mmm, excellent. Now this is what exactly I was on about earlier. And then take it off the stove and then carefully pour the creme pat over some parchment paper onto a tray and then just carefully spread it out nice and evenly. And then use another piece of parchment paper to sit over the top, stop it forming a skin. And if you're wondering why we put it on a tray and spread it out, the reason for it is if you increase the work surface area, it's gonna cool down a lot quicker. So the custard's cooled down now, and what we're gonna do is pretty much put it into a blender to make it nice and silky. So give this a blend for about roughly five minutes until silky. So have a little quick taste to make sure you're happy with the consistency. And if you feel like it needs a little bit more maple syrup, just add one or two teaspoons more, but just be careful it doesn't loosen up the consistency too much. And then grab yourself a piping bag with a fine pointy nozzle. And then pour the maple creme pat straight into the bag. And then pop that in your fridge till later on. So finally our dough is doubled in size and uh, we're gonna knock this bad boy back. And just lightly dust the work surface with a little bit of flour before getting it out. And then just gently knock the air out of it. So before we start rolling this out with a rolling pin, we're gonna grab ourselves a tray lined with parchment paper and dust in a flour on top. Or if you've got a silk mat, go for that. Also, did I say one tray? We're probably gonna need two trays. And then what we wanna do is just gently roll this out into a nice large pillow. And then once you've got a large rectangle, you wanna cut it up into six. And if you're looking for measurements, we're looking roughly about 85 grams each. And then all we wanna do is just carefully shape them into long rectangles. So once you've got yourself a nice long rectangle, pop it onto the tray, three on each tray. So once these are rolled out, we're just gonna lightly dust them with a little touch more flour and then lightly place cling film over the top so they can prove until doubled in size. So while we're waiting for those to double in size, we can actually start getting the oil ready and heating up. So we're gonna need 1,500 ml of peanut oil, which is 6.3 cups. Um, Okay, I guess I run out. So finally, once you have enough, we're gonna pop the oil onto the stove, onto a medium heat, and we're gonna bring this up to 160 Celsius or 320 Fahrenheit. In addition, if you wanna get a plate with kitchen roll ready, not too close to the oil, so we can drain the donuts off. In addition, if you wanna grab yourself a tray with a cooling rack as well for the donuts to cool down. So there we go, they've doubled in size, and it doesn't really look like much. But when we pop them in that hot oil, they're gonna puff up again. So uh, don't go too crazy on the proofing. But we'll see if we've proofed it enough because you know, proof is in the pudding, right? So without knocking these donuts about, just be very careful picking them up and be very, very gentle with them. And then we're gonna drop them face side down gently into that oil. And these are gonna cook for about roughly three to four minutes each side till golden brown. And I would say that's a very successful long donut. And then repeat the process for the rest of the donuts as well. And then once you're done with that last donut, what you basically wanna do is pretty much turn the heat off, take the pan off the heat, and just let that cool down for a good few hours before straining it and reusing that oil. Look at those delightful cheeky loafers. Goodness me, look at them. Absolutely fantastic, they've came out an absolute little treat. So we're gonna let these cool down now and then afterwards we're gonna pop a hole in them and then we're gonna start piping that maple creme patissiere in there. So while those donuts are cooling down, we're gonna start making the glazes and if you're gonna ask me why on earth have you got a pie dish? If you actually do it in a mixing bowl, you'll probably find it more difficult to get a nice even coating, whereas this will fit an absolute gem. So for the plain maple glaze, we're gonna need 150 grams of powdered sugar or icing sugar, which is about one and a half cups. 
Then we're going to need about a teaspoon of vanilla extract and then one or two tablespoons of maple syrup to help bind it together. Then grab yourself a little whisk and then whisk that up until it's all bound together. And if you don't want to add too much more maple, you can always add a little splash of milk. But you know for a fact we're going to add more maple. And then once it's all incorporated, you should have a nice, beautiful consistency for your glaze to go on top of those donuts. Or shall I say longs? And then for the chocolate maple glaze, it's the exact same ingredients. So 150 grams of icing sugar or powdered sugar, which is one and a half cups, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And in addition, we're going to need 30 grams of cocoa powder. Not forgetting that maple syrup. And then whisk that up until you got yourself some syrupy business. Yeah, maybe a little spot of milk as well. And then you should have your chocolatey maple glaze ready to go. So before those glazes start to set, we're gonna pop a hole in our donuts now. And all you're gonna need is pretty much a vegetable knife and then just pop it in the end. Give it a little twizzle, give it a little jig. Oh, I meant, I meant the knife, not me. And then making sure you get a nice little pocket in there so when we pipe the custard in, it's gonna come out delightful. Sorry, the creme pat. So we'll grab our maple creme pat, pop the nozzle in the hole, and then just give it a little squeeze, filling up those donuts. Oh, sh and if you squeeze a little too hard, you might break the bag. So maybe double bag it or maybe use a larger nozzle possibly. So finally, after clearing up your mess and being a messy sod, we're actually gonna glaze these now and they're all filled. Fantastic. So just to carefully pick up the donut or the long, shall we say, and then just gently dip it in the bottom. Let it drip off and then curl it around. Fantastic. And then carefully repeat the same with the chocolate as well. And then once they're glazed, we're just going to let them set for about 15 to 20 minutes. There is our maple longs and also our chocolate glaze maple longs filled with that maple creme patissiere. My goodness me, these look fantastic. Very, very happy with how these turned out. They are looking absolutely delicious. And of course, we're not finishing without that cross section as well. Here we go. Oh, baby. So we're going for a little smidge of the maple long. I don't want an entire one because, uh, you know. So here we go. Here's our first bite. And uh, let's, have a, let's have a look without making too much mess, right? Mm. Oh my goodness me. All I can say about this right now is pretty much they're like little pillows of delightfulness. So soft the donut, that beautiful silky creamy maple creme patissiere and then that chocolate maple glaze on top. Oh my goodness me. It's, it's an absolute treat. So those turned out an absolute dream. Super happy with those maple long donuts. They came out absolutely great. If you wanna try this recipe as well, the list of ingredients will be below in the description box, so give it a bash. So that's all we got time for this week. I hope everyone enjoyed the episode this week. It's good to be back. Also, if you wanna catch me live on Twitch, feel free to come stop by. Link is in the description box. Monday to Thursday, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, we start till whenever we finish. Also feel free to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and also hit that bell notification to let you know when the videos are ready. But until next time, folks, you stay safe, awesome, and amazing. <laughs>